Well, let's take a look. I, I know you've done um, some extensive work, done a couple of mock drafts. Let's talk about some of the guys you like who might be available at 26. And um, y- you threw a name at me uh, from Georgia, uh, Aziz Ajulari. Tell me a little bit about him. Tell me what you like about him. Well, Ojulari is a name that really didn't cross my mind until the Titans signed Bud Dupree because I thought Ojulari for his size is maybe a better fit in a 3-4 base at outside linebacker than a 4-3 base at defensive end. But with the Titans signing Dupree, I did a little more work on Ojulari. And I look at his physical frame. He measured out at his pro day at 249 pounds, which if you look at it, is actually only three pounds heavier than Yannick Ngakwe, who has started at a 4-3 throughout his career. I look at Ojulari... You know, watching his highlights, he's explosive. He wins with speed. He has, he's got surprising power for a guy his size, 6'4", about 249 pounds. Um, he, but the other thing also, he has a really good motor. I saw one play, it was against Kentucky, where he was double teamed. A running back comes in the chip to help the tackle, and he still fights them off to get the sack. That was pretty impressive to me. I think with Ojolari, the big thing when it comes to him as far as improvement at the next level is technique. And I think that's obviously something that, you know, teams feel they can always probably improve on technique. You can't teach the athletic ability, the the speed, and the motor that a guy like Oshalari has. The other thing about him, a young guy, so a, a red shirt sophomore this year. So he's a guy that you would think would be able to put some some added weight on that frame just by getting through an NFL, uh, you know, regimen as far as working out goes in the weight room. Yeah, and I, I don't think he needs to add more than maybe 10 pounds, and that's not that much, especially like you mentioned for a, a guy like him. He's only a redshirt sophomore, so he's a younger guy compared to some of the other guys in his class, like Quiddy Pay, Jalen Phillips, um, among others. He's got room to grow, and I think you don't necessarily need 280, 290-pound guys on the defensive line. If you have a speed guy opposite Miles Garrett, they can really complement each other really well, I think. And you're probably putting them in with Tack McKinley and, and rotating them in. So it's it's all good there. Uh, another guy, and, and you you mentioned him, Jalen Phillips. We've talked about him. I know you like him. Tell me again what you like about Jalen Phillips from uh, Miami, Florida. Well, Phillips is an interesting player. We've talked about him before, how he had to retire briefly from football due to concussions and injuries. But when he came back and played at Miami in 2020, he was outstanding. He put up tremendous numbers. His athleticism is tremendous. I love his hand strength. He's got a pretty good motor. It's just going to come down, I think, to a team that's comfortable enough, understanding where his injury situation is. It's going to come down to medicals, I think. So he's got an interesting range. We had him in our dueling mock draft, mock all the way up to 14 with the Vikings. He could be a guy that's taken in the mid-teens in the late first round. Because of that medical stuff, it's kind of all over the place, and I think that's what you kind of see with a lot of this edge rusher class. What really pops about him? I, I know you like him. What is it that makes you think this is a guy that could really develop into something? He's got a pro-ready frame. He's 6'5", 258 pounds. Again, he's an extremely athletic player. Uh, just got the ability to make plays both in the run and the pass. Again, I mentioned how strong his hands are. He's a, he's really good at that. Um, he's a playmaker, really aggressive, able to get into the playing creates and turnovers. And that was a big that's a big thing with the Browns. We knew last year their success came obviously by forcing turnovers. And if you have another defensive end that can create those turnovers, a guy that can create havoc in the pocket for quarterbacks, that's always a plus. And Phillips is a guy that can do both those things. And another guy that we'll talk about that you know potentially could be there with that 26 pick, Jason Owe, and he's from Penn State. I know you like him as well. Tell me about Owe. Owe is one of the wild cards, I think, of this first round because there's so much to love about Jason Owe, the prospect, because he's got so much untapped athletic potential. 6'5", 257, just tremendous speed. Runs faster than a lot of defensive linemen are going to look, and he's got just so many physical tools that it's intriguing for a team that wants to take a chance on him. The only problem with Owe is he really has not had the kind of production you want to see out of a first-round prospect. You're kind of hoping that he can he can live up to that uh, billing and perform despite having those – limitations of not having production you look at his numbers he didn't have a single sack in 2020 but he did have five in 2019 
filling in kind of as a, as a rotational guy. So the lack of having a single sack should raise a question mark. I think it's fair to say that if he's that productive, why he didn't get a sack in college is interesting. But if you're a team that just needs a situational guy, maybe kind of where the Browns are, maybe you take a chance and bank on that athletic ability and then hope that if you get a co- if you believe in your coaches that you can develop him, that you can work him in, you may have something on your hands. Yeah, it always sounds like the kind of guy that um, staffs will look at and go, we know we can unlock that athletic ability. Is that kind of the feeling that you get? Whoever drafts him is going to say, the ability's there, our guys can unlock it, and we have something. Yeah, I think so. I feel like it seems like coaches are always kind of confident that they are the ones that can unlock something, that they found the hidden gem that another team really doesn't have. But when I see Owe, I see tools, tools that are rare for a prospect at that position, tools that if you can unlock that talent, if you can coach that, coach the technique into him with that athletic ability, there's only the ability to have something there. I think it's just the risk of having a guy so raw. And for a team like the Browns, when you're competing for a Super Bowl now, as their moves in the defense suggest that they hope to do, do you want to take that risk and take such a raw player in that position? Or do you want to take a guy like Ojalari or Phillips that has a little more proven ability?